Good morning, Apostolic Faith Church Sunday School, grades third through fifth. I'm Sister Brienne, and I'm going to be teaching our class today. I'm going to open in prayer, and then I'm going to read you the life application story, which today is very special because it's a personal experience story that I think will speak to our lesson for today. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for my students. Thank you for the friends and family who join us, who are new and who join us every week. I pray over them safety, protection, and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's theme is God like love. And again, this is Apostolic Faith Church Sunday School for grades third through fifth. So welcome. All right, so I'm going to start with the story. When I was a little girl, my classroom had a party. It was to celebrate Christmas before we all went on vacation until January. There was a secret Santa list going around for anyone who wanted to join in. My teacher's rules were, if you sign up, you have to make sure you give a gift to get a gift. Well, that seemed fair enough for me. So I was in fifth grade and I was at this new school. Um, this was my first year here. And although I had a lot of new friends, this would be a great way to fill a part of the class, at least I thought. Well, when it came time to draw names for the Santa list, I got a big surprise. I didn't get someone I wanted to give a gift to. I got someone whom I never expected. And he was the biggest, toughest, sometimes rudest boy in class. I won't even say his name to protect the innocent, you know. But here I was holding his ticket and I had no idea what to do. We were supposed to keep our name secret, but somehow a few classmates found out that I got him. Eventually he found out. Everyone told me not to give him a gift because he was so mean to everyone. They thought it would be the perfect way to pay him back to embarrass him and to make him cry. Well, he wasn't as mean to me because I started out, I stayed out of his way. But um, that night I told my mom what happened and she gave me some really good advice. She told me that he was a person who God cared about and maybe I could change things by showing him love. I have to say I was a little nervous, but the next day I went to the store and I bought a huge poster board and I colored it. And then I took $5 and 10 cents exactly to the store and I brought all kinds of candy. And the funny thing is, um, a sidebar, I didn't expect to spend that much, but when I got there, it was like God just did something in my heart and I was very excited about buying this candy. And by the way, it was a little cheaper back then than it is now. So on my giant Christmas card, I glued the candy and I wished him well and I rolled up the poster and then I brought it to school. At school, we passed out all the gifts, but my classmate wasn't there. My other classmates were, however, and they saw the gift that I gave him and they were so envious that they asked me to trade. They even asked me if I could just give it to them and pretend like I never brought it for him. But when it was time to give gifts, um, I found out he cried. So during recess later on that day, we're playing outside and I hear a loud voice scream from a building across the street. And it goes, hey, who gave me this gift? And everyone said, Brianne. He said, thanks. I want to be your best friend and I will never bully you. And, he's, and the thing is, he stayed home that day because he expected nobody to give him anything. From that day on, we were good friends and his whole personality changed. He was kind to everyone. But it was a great thing. And I was really glad that God used me in that way. I hope you like that story. Um, and now we're gonna move on to our scripture for the day, our key scripture. And it's found in 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in me. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So he that keepeth his commandments, what are they saying? And that part is saying, the person, in my case, me from my story, who keeps God's command to love, he dwelleth in God, meaning his, he has relationship. He lives in, he lives in his relationship with God. And God is in his heart and he cares about God's heart and doing the things that pleases God. So this is how we know um, that we are a part of 
that we have relationship with God, that we're a part of his family when we do things the way that he would do them, which is out of love. So let's keep going down. All right, so now I'm going to read to you the rest of our scriptures. We're going to start with 1 John. So now we're going to go on to verse, verses 11 through 15. But this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates him. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. Now, the story of Cain and Abel is about two brothers, and I won't go into great detail about the story. However, you can find it in Genesis, and it's a wonderful story for you to read um, with your parent. Um, and you'll definitely need you'll definitely need them to help you understand some of the things. So, first John. Um, Chapter 3, 16, verses 18. This particular passage was very, very, very um, special to what we're trying to communicate today. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us love with words. Let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. And again, if we go back up to our lead scripture for today, that's basically what we're communicating to you. We're saying that how can you say you love God and you love people and every time someone needs um need something or needs to hear something special or be treated with the love of God, you don't do it. You only say that you want to do it. This is how we'll know that you truly do not only belong to God, but that you care about the things of God. Then we have verses 19 through 24, and it says, this is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friend, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God. And receive anything from him we ask because we keep his commands and we do what pleases him and this is his command to believe in the name of his son jesus christ and to love one another as he commanded us the one who keeps god's commands lives in him and he in them and this is how we know that he lives in us we know it by the spirit he gave us so let's break this tongue down a little bit this is a pretty big tongue so First part is this is how we know that we belong to the truth, and this is um, and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence. Now, when you're living for God, sometimes people will try to convince you not to live, not to do things a certain way. For instance, in my story about myself, you know, when I was in fifth grade, I be I belonged to God, and I knew that the right thing deep down was to buy my classmate this present. However, because of his behavior, everyone around me didn't want me to. Everyone around me wanted me to be to mistreat him. And honestly, they could not understand why I would be nice to a boy who wasn't nice to everyone in class. But God put it in my heart um, after speaking with my mom to understand that sometimes when people are fussy and mean, it's because they haven't been treated very nice. Now, that boy in my class, he did not come to school that day because he thought no one would treat him nice. He thought people were going to treat him bad. And so it caused me to understand that maybe the reason why he treated other people bad is because he was used to being treated bad himself. So with that said, I had a peace in my heart that I knew the truth. And the truth was that God wanted me to show love. All right. So that's the best way I think I can explain that. And then it says, if our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts. He knows everything. Now, there's a scripture that says that, um, that says that in him, there is therefore now no condemnation. See, God doesn't condemn us or make us feel like it's all over and just 
terrible, awful, and no hope. God doesn't do that. See, when we're wrong, God convicts us, meaning he lets us know in our heart that we've made a mistake and we need to correct it. But he never wants us to think that it's the end of the road for us. He never wants us to think that all is lost and it's hope. That's what the enemy does. So when you know that you belong to God and you know that God loves you, you know that you have a story and an ending that's going to be greater than anything you could imagine so you should never allow condemnation in your heart so when you have that peace in your heart you know that you're in God and if you are in God and you're feeling and you're not feeling peace then pray for peace and that's how you'll know also that God is listening and that he cares about your heart okay and to receive anything from him we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him so again while you're living your life for God and you're, and you're doing your best and depending on him to help you, um, you can ask him for anything, including peace, um, not just for things, but also for peace. And he'll give those things to you because he sees what you're doing. God knows everything. Now, and this is his command, to believe in the name of the son, of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. So God is asking you the way to the, he's saying that the way to the father, our God, is through the son, Jesus. That's the way to be a part of God's family is to believe in his son, Jesus Christ, because Jesus made a very big sacrifice for us on the cross. He died so that we could have a second chance, so that we wouldn't have to live a condemned life. So it's very important to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And the one who keeps God's commands, meaning it believing in the name of Jesus Christ, but also loving other people the way that God commands us um, will be can be rest assured that this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit that he gave us, meaning God put his spirit in us, those of us who are saved and believe in Jesus Christ. Now, this is your action for this week. Um, as you can see, my honeycomb diagram, it says everyone around us could use some love. So if you look in the very center, we have Jesus. Now, when the love of God, the love of Jesus is in your heart and you live your life remembering how much Jesus loves you and that he wants you to love others, you can extend that love to other people. And so on the diagram surrounding Jesus, we have my family, my friends, my classmates, my neighbors, my church and my community. Those are all things that you can love, you can extend love to based on your relationship with. You have your family, it's the holiday season. You can spend time with them. Um, you have your friends, you can call them and see how they're doing, um, check on them, send them a card. You have your classmates who you can be kind to on your Zoom calls if you're Zoom learning. Um, if you're going in person, you can be kind to them with like I said, kind words and gestures. You have your neighbors. Um, you know, although a lot of us are having to stay in right now, there's nothing wrong with raking leaves for your neighbors, nothing wrong with giving a good hello or even a phone call. You have your church where you can donate, um, where you can check on members um, that your parents approve of, you know, approve of you calling. Um, and then you have your community where you can donate things and you can um, just be kind to people. There's lots of people during this season who are feeling lonely, especially because we all aren't able to have the parties that we would usually be used to around Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so just a, just a nice hello or a wave, um, uh, how are you doing? Or just being courteous when you are walking down the street would really help to show the love of God in um, this current time that we're living in. And so that is what our weekly activity is this week. All right. I want to thank you. Thank you for joining our class. I'm going to pray us out and then I want you to have a wonderful, marvelous week. Father God, in Jesus name, thank you for my class, my class. Thank you for the students and the family and friends who joined us. I pray that the love of Jesus would grow in their hearts and that they would desire to have a relationship with you. We know, Lord God, that if we have your love in our hearts, we have the strength and the power to do what you called us to do, which is love other people. I thank you so much for their protection. May they be safe and healthy. And I pray that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. In Jesus' name, amen.
All right, so now, if you are interested in um, talking some more about salvation or even being baptized, please feel free to call Apostolic Faith Church. Um, our phone number is 773-373-8500. And I pray for you a great week. Bye-bye.